Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men have asked me for the right words to say to be more attractive, desirable, and more of a leader. And I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because at the root of a connected and affectionate relationship and being more effective and inspiring at work is your ability to influence others. But most often influence is not gained or lost with words. It's from what I call the invisible factors. So I created a quick guide for you called three ways men lose influence at work and with women. So you can understand how these invisible factors work and what has women and colleagues both more inspired to say yes. I think you're also going to be surprised to find out the moment when your influence actually begins. So grab the guide for free at shanajamescoaching.com slash three ways. That's shanajamescoaching.com slash the number three and the word ways, W-A-Y-S. Or you can text ALIVE to 44144. That's the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144. I hope you enjoy the guide and this episode. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm excited to be here today with Boyson Hodgson. Did I say your last name right? Perfectly. (laughs) The communications director of the Mankind Project. And Boyson and I have known each other for a couple years now. And I appreciate every time we have a conversation about supporting men. I appreciate your... Simultaneously, your humanity, your strength, your stand for men, um, and your vulnerability, which I include as strength, Um, you know, the way that you're always really honest with me and, um, you know, not sugarcoating things and, and making it safe for men to do the same. So I'm excited to be here today to have a conversation about responsibility and, you know, the current time of Me Too and Time's Up and everything happening for women, men, and people of all genders, and, and, and getting into this question of like, well, what am I actually responsible for as a man? You know, if I'm not doing any of these things and I'm not making these things happen, um, then where does my responsibility lie and how can I be a force for good without necessarily taking on that I've done something wrong or, you know, allowing myself to be blamed or attacked? Yeah, cool. Thank you. Good. Yeah, great introduction that wrote allowing myself not to be not allowing myself to be attacked. You writing this down? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, take notes so I can remember things and come back. I I think one of the big pieces and thank you again for yeah I appreciate our relationship as well and uh, it always seems to me like we are able to drop in pretty quickly to yeah like instantly very honest, very Mm -hmm. present, very honest. Mm -hmm. We we share some similar things and values in in the world and yeah. yeah, And values. Um, yeah. Men in the age of me too. And responsibility big, this is a big thing. And I think that you and I started, uh, entertaining this possibility of having this conversation because of some work that I've done with the mankind project, which was to launch a campaign called hashtag I am responsible Mm -hmm. in in response to what was happening with me too. So um, instead of going to uh, instead of trying to go this kind of backlash pendulum swing kind of stuff that we've seen from some men yeah. where I wanted to take us and where I think we show up really well in the mankind project is, you know, our, our flagship training, we lead off Friday night with accountability. Uh-huh. We lead off Friday night with, you know, I am responsible for my choices and my actions mm-hmm. in the world. I am responsible for my emotions in the world. And I think that the distinction that we throw out there that is, uncomfortable a very uncomfortable distinction is Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for my choices and actions and the impacts of those choices and actions intended or unintended Uh uh-huh uh-huh intended or unintended or unintended yeah 
Right. So you may not mean to create a negative impact. You may not mean to hurt someone, but they, how can you actually take responsibility for that? Again, without the going into the shame spiral of I'm bad, I'm wrong, or even that I, I, I did this thing. It's like distinguishing, right? Like, Oh, I didn't, that person feels hurt. Yes. Yes. Not that I did that, but okay. I had a role in that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think it is, it has certainly been uncomfortable for me. Yeah. Um, you know, not just the last year, not just this, this age, but this learning process of, oh shit, I'm not just responsible. You know, I, if, if I step on your toe on purpose, yeah, great. If I step on your toe, if I hurt your emotions, if I hurt you. Yeah. Unintentionally. Uh Uh-huh. My job's not to get you to not feel what you're feeling. Right. That is not my job. It is my job to witness and understand the impact, whether I intended the impact or not. Okay. Two really big questions here. One then is like, how far out does this go? Right. Because as a man who says, I haven't abused, I haven't harassed, I haven't done these things. So then where does responsibility lie in there? And then the other piece is, um, right, I'm imagining in the Me Too era, you know, someone might come back to you and say, I've felt hurt by you, or I've felt harassed by you, which leads to, I would imagine, a lot of fear, right, of like, oh, no, this could threaten my career, this could threaten my family, this could threaten all these things. And so this, these are two really big questions, like I said, yeah. but right, like, how do you ride that line of, um, I'm going to be responsible because this person's saying I had an impact, even though I don't think I necessarily did this. Yeah. And I am not going to pretend to have all the answers in this conversation. Man, I don't know yeah. on, on some of this. And, you know, in the, I am responsible. The first part of the question is about, you know, I, so I am one of the quote unquote good guys. If, if that's my self perception. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and the campaign and I am responsible. Part of what I put out there was as a man who is self-aware, conscious and willing to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm going to do is take responsibility for the culture of manhood. Ooh, love this. So I am part of that. Uh I can't step outside of this construct that we're sitting in this Mm -hmm. cultural construct that we're sitting in that has masculinity femininity that has patriarchy Mm -hmm. as systemic not patriarchy is just men but patriarchy as a systemic power structure yeah pretending that i'm outside of that and because i didn't do anything that i'm not responsible for the whole thing or creating the environment for the whole thing to emerge, evolve, change, be Mm -hmm. what I would like it to be, what I want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, any men, is this true? Is it true? Yeah. I don't think that I know men who actually want the world to be a shitty, horrible, violent (laughs) place for women. No, most Right. Most don't want that. Most of us don't. Even guys who say really shitty stuff, they still don't want that. That's not who they are. Yeah. But, but there's a big step from there to say, okay, I'm going to step fully into creating the right. opposite of that. I'm going to actually do something. And when I see other people, whether it's making jokes or ignoring or giving credit where, you know, to a man versus a woman for saying the same thing or all those things, like, oh, I'm actually going to do something about it. I'm going to risk my own personal safety or well-being. Yes, from a place of knowing that I'm a part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's another great distinction, call out versus call in Mm. culture. Um, 
So for me as a man, I, there are multiple ways to approach things, but there's kind of two big buckets. I can practice call out, mm -hmm. which is I can call out is like, yo, dude, no, that's fucked up. You need to not be that, do that, say that, you know, public. so is it, is it more of like a shame based or blame? I see it as shame based. Uh -huh. Most men will take it on that way. Uh -huh. And I think that's what, what a, we see what I'm seeing in a lot of the dialogue, you know, some of the social media dialogue, a lot of the m mainstream media coverage, this o reactionary stuff from men, mm -hmm. but it wasn't me, not all men, da, 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 all of this reactionary stuff because the, there's a, been a big move about uh, calling out, calling yeah. out men, calling men to account. Oh, accountability. That's a, that's a good one. So, if we're going to live in a world where I'm responsible for creating the kind of culture that I want, then what's going to be the most effective way for me to create that in a one-on-one, -on -one, in intimate, or in online conversations in mm -hmm. people that I'm in a relationship with? And what I find is working for me better than saying, I'm not one of those bad guys, is recognizing that I am... I am embedded in this masculinity just like the next, next guy. Mm -hmm. I was raised in the same stuff. The Kavanaugh hearings, the stuff, he's a little bit older than me, but the references to the high school stuff, yeah. yep. Yep. Like, yeah. dude, I know you were bullshitting us <laughs> because I heard those things. FFFF, yeah, that was in my high school. Yeah. Heard that. Yeah. Um, those things are, those things are out there. So first of all, I'm not going to push myself away. I'm not going to push that and say, it's not me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to call a man in from this place of, yeah, it's me. I, I, yeah, you and me, we share some stuff uh -huh. and I can have a conversation from that place of what do you think the impacts are? Can uh -huh. we, you and I just settle into hearing? So calling in is more a invitation, it sounds like, to another man of, hey, we're both a part of this. Can we actually take a deeper look at this together? Yeah. Can we take a deeper look at this together? And then I think um, perspective taking from that place. So not only are we part of this together, but can we actually take a sidestep from it? Mm-hmm to see what it looks like mm -hmm. from the, from a different perspective. Uh -huh. and, and which, from what perspective? From outside of uh, my reactivity, from outside my attachment, mm -hmm. from outside my defensiveness, those, all those things may naturally arise in me. Yeah. I may be experiencing the emotional agitation of fear and shame and all of that stuff that's going on in my body, can I <sighs> and step with you, brother, uh -huh. outside of this to take uh -huh. a look at? And Which I love might, the with you part, yeah. right? Like I'm with you and in my own body and nervous system, right? Can I acknowledge I have this fear, I have this frustration, I have this whatever it may be, and can we still bring our clear mind and heart to look at this together? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then from there in this very specific in me too, for what it means to me is I'm willing to step, take a side step from that. Can we just stand here and listen? Mm. Can we hear the hurt that is being expressed and the impact that is being expressed. Mm. We may be, I will be experiencing my own stuff. Yep. That goes along with that. And can I hear the hurt that's being expressed? And something that I, I have found valuable for this in the mankind project, when we do, um, we do a process called clearing, which is about 
dealing with emotional charges. So if mm -hmm. I have an emotional charge up with somebody, something's feeling gross, yucky, I feel angry, I feel, you know, charged. Yeah. Um, we have a process to do that. So the, the person who is feeling the charge gets to stand up and, and do a process. The person who stands to stands in the place opposite mm -hmm. the their receiving. job the receiving person yes mm -hmm. whether it's actually the person with the chart who, right. you know, have, or just a stand in it is, a stand in somebody yeah their job is to be a mirror and nothing else mm -hmm. and so we have this kind of thing that we call put up your shield so do you have a shield that you can hold to stand in uh -huh. anything that's going so to come at you. Anything is going to come at you. And, and when you say be a mirror, are they actually mirroring back or they're just a clear kind of receptor to let it come through? Just a clear, yeah. it's, you know, we describe it as a black granite. Mm -hmm. It's just black granite. I like and that. Stand. I've actually, I mean, I've done that a lot with men and been a stand in for mom, exes, women, and just had men cry, scream, you know, whatever at me. And it's been such a powerful process for them yes. to actually get to say some of those things. And this is kind of a side note, but it, I think it also ties in exactly relevant. Well, right. It's like, I think a lot of times men don't have a place to share the resentment, the frustration, the feeling blamed, the feeling attacked, the feeling abandoned, all those things that have happened with women. And then therefore, I believe, right, that creates this bundle of resentment Yes. that then they're walking around in the world with. And it's not safe to say that to any. I mean, who in their right mind as a man would actually just open up about all that? It has to kind of come sideways. Yeah. And that's how I see it being expressed out there is a lot of it is sideways. Right. Yeah. So for the person standing in the role of, of shield mirror receiver mm -hmm. of all of this, which uh, as a man in this culture today, we are all in this role. Yeah. Whether, you know, I'm choosing to accept it. Mm -hmm. You, my brother, may not choose to accept it. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. I look for what's going to be more effective toward creating a, a healthy, sane, safe culture. Yeah. And the stand that I'm taking is I'm willing to stand in that role mm -hmm. and hold the shield, hold the target without being the target. Mm -hmm. And for what reason? Like, what do you see comes of it? Well, so for me, what that means is I get to actually sometimes hear and feel, um, experience the truth of a woman's story mm. or a man's story. And holding that shield so that I'm not uh, being enveloped by it, taken over by it, taken down by it. Right. And I can learn. So we have, we have this idea of take what fits uh -huh. and let the rest go. Uh -huh. Right. So you, you as the receiver then develop the capacity to be in the world, hearing all of these blames and attacks and whatever, and actually stay centered and not personalize it and actually, you know, stay strong yes. and clear. Yes. And mm -hmm. then, so back to responsibility, take what fits. So uh -huh. for me, over the last, um, you know, over the last two months and over the last year, going, reflecting on who I was and who I have been in relationship, mm. I have learned a lot. What I have, have you, learned, what have, what are yeah. some of the highlights of what you found? <laughs> uh, whew. Yeah. So what I recognize is I recognize all the places from, you know, when, from those days where I wasn't, I was not in a uh, willing, happy openness to have consent conversations mm. where I was mm. going with assumptions 
way more than going with open communication. Yeah. I have been able to own um, and get impacts for my disappearing act, which was, has been, that was me for a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, emotional intensity, emotional, physical intensity, da, 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 yay, 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 yay. Gone. The disappearing act. Yeah. You know, ghosting. And you've been actually able to talk to people and hear the impact that that had. I've been able to have some conversations about that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how that has impacted, how that has impacted people. And, and then there are, uh, there are other relationships that I've reflected on where I haven't, I have not had conversations about this, but I'm coming into a much fuller ownership of how I co-created dysfunction how I co-created mistrust, Mm -hmm. how I, how I hurt. Reminds me of an exercise I often have men do when we start working together, if they're either starting over, you know, in a new relationship or if they're, even if they're in the same relationship, but it needs a restart in a way to actually look at, okay, what didn't go the way you wanted it to And then how can you actually take responsibility for that? Because yes, Yes. there are two sides to every story, but the only place you actually get to be empowered is to look at how did I create that? You know, even if you are being nagged at and bitched at and complained at, there's a way that you had a role in either, whether it's allowing that communication to happen or not being on the same team with each other or whatever that is, it's really important to know. Yeah. Yeah. How did I create and perpetuate the dysfunction yep. that I had in relationship? Yeah. Um, yeah. And now that's been really valuable. So that gives me an opportunity now in my marriage. And, and this applies to every, this applies to all relationships. So this applies yeah, to my parenting relationship too. How do I not do the things that I've done in the past that have created impacts that I didn't want? Yeah. Even if I didn't intend to create the impacts that I have. Mm-hmm. So I think that, yeah, we have the opportunity as men in creating and being responsible for the culture of masculinity and the kind of manhood that we want in the world. Mm-hmm to model what we want to see yeah reflect actions back of other men to them so that they can more clearly see their actions Mm -hmm. and the impacts that they're having and to stand in to call in men to to recognize and be able to say can we look can we listen can we be present for Mm -hmm. fire that's coming up And can then we acknowledge our, so I think a lot of what's going on right now is men are being really confronted with the fact that the way that power has played out in our history, in our Mm -hmm. written history is changing. Yes. And that's threatening. It's a huge threat. Mm -hmm. It's scary. Terrifying. I would imagine. I mean, Ray, I'm not a man, but I would imagine that first to be willing to recognize, okay, power, the way power structure has been set up has been good for me in a lot of ways. And I also recognize that I work with a lot of men where just because men have power doesn't mean I necessarily feel powerful, right? Doesn't mean a man himself always feels powerful, but that there is a, you know, a power structure that's in my favor if I'm imagining being a man. And then I imagine that power structure changing. Yeah and tilting, right? That sounds terrifying. Yeah. And can we hold all of those aspects as true? So I, me as an individual man, I may not feel powerful. I may not feel powerful in this workplace relationship situation, you know, culture at large. I may not feel powerful in that. And can we recognize that it's also true that Mm -hmm. men as a class or patriarchy as a class is patriarchy as a system has created something that benefits me. Yeah. Simply because of the way that I was born. Yeah. 
So it sounds like, like if we were to um, just go back to what you were saying, you were saying men can actually model and reflect and call in. Sounds like those are three really big keys of being responsible and recognizing, you know, the using the power you have yeah. to help create more good, more justice, more connection between people. Yes. All true. All true. Yeah. Model, reflect, and call in. So what am I doing personally with my actions? How am I reflecting back to the people in my world, the impacts of their actions in a compassionate, empathetic real way that's key right yeah. <laughs> am i reflecting that back compassionately and empathetically instead of the shaming calling <laughs> out version instead of the calling out instead of shaming instead of attacking um all of those things that that i do i get yeah. hooked i get hooked into that stuff too especially in social media yeah and you know as with with dudes with dudes i can very easily get hooked into those fights yeah. um Yes. And then so, not throwing away. And I want to speak to, you know, something else that I hear from guys out there and I'm seeing a lot of this is in a very kind of integral theory sense, transcend and include. So let's also recognize that the system of power that we have had for recorded history has given us an incredible amount of good stuff. Mm hmm. And because it's been that way doesn't mean that it has to be that way. Uh-huh. Well, like we, meaning we don't need, it's not like all the good stuff is necessarily going to go away it's if something not. shifts. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not. The, yeah. the, the technological creation, the technological marvel of the world we've created is not going to disappear because the power dynamic is now evolving right. into something else. It does have me sit with this question though of like, wow, what are, you know, we can get comfortable in our own lives with what we have and the roles we have and right. What are we each willing to give up or are we willing to give up in order to support others? I mean, yes. And I think that that's a, that is a question for everyone in, especially in the Western world, in the developed world, in the United mm -hmm. States, where we're mm -hmm. sitting in the United States. That's not just a question for men. That's no. a question for all of us. And which is confusing too, right? Because, you know, I live in the Bay Area. It's one of the most expensive places in the world. As part of the world, I have a lot, right? Or like as a, a member of yeah. the world community, as a member of trying to survive in the Bay Area community is hard and yet right how do we even see what we could give up or get outside of the structures that are holding us and you know in our viewpoints and before when you were saying like oh right can i i can listen you know as a man i can listen to the pain and at first i i kind of wanted to get beyond that to like okay but then what's next like what action are you going to take but actually realizing i think that's a step that most I don't know if most many men or people could want to skip over, even in our intimate relationships, in our work. Like it's, it's probably one of the hardest ones is to actually listen and hear the impact mm -hmm. and the pain that other people are experiencing and be willing to be touched by it. Mm -hmm. yeah. it and, and to come back to it. Meaning? It, it's going to keep happening. Uh huh. So, you know, we're only, we're a year into this now. Yeah. We're a year into hashtag me too. And you know, what I love, um, uh, Tarana Burke. So the, the original me too, mm -hmm. um, you know, she's now saying she's now talking a lot about trauma. She's mm -hmm. now talking about, you know, this was not, this is not intended to be, this is not intended to be a bludgeon. This was never intended to be a bludgeon. This is intended to be a way for women mm -hmm. to express the pain and impact. Yeah. And now 
now what are we looking at now? So, oh, shit, there's trauma everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. And, and both are true. Again, women have been violently oppressed and traumatized. Mm -hmm. And men are also traumatized mm -hmm. by the system that we live in. Yeah. And have also some of them been abused. And, and, and those are stories that being in men's groups, for as long as I have, yeah. I've heard a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. I have heard a lot of, of childhood and adult um, sexual abuse and violence. And, right. And emotional abuse and violence. And emotional and, abuse mm -hmm. and violence. Yes. So we are traumatized by the system. So the now what is <laughs> uh -huh. now that, oh, crap, I'm willing to take responsibility. I'm willing to stand up and listen to, to witness the pain that's mm -hmm. experienced. That's likely going to trigger pain in me. Right. Where do I go to deal with it? Yes. <laughs> How do I learn to process that? Well, and the, right, and that the, the now what includes I look at, deal with, get help with my own trauma, my own pain. Yes. Yeah. My own trauma, my own pain, and then to be able to to uh, not have we don't have to uh, put a hierarchy on pain. Mm. Mm -hmm. we have to acknowledge it and process it and work with it. Yeah. And so, you know, we're back to the mankind project. That's what we do. We create spaces for men to take those risks to process their pain and trauma, yeah. which makes them more available to stand up and hear <sighs> from someone else. Yeah. Which makes it right more than they're more available to have connection and intimacy. I mean, I've I've always when I started working with men back in the day, and I would sit in front of there would be a team of women, and we'd be sitting in front of a you know a, a row of men who came in for this workshop, and and it was a question of why were we there as women? And I I remember thinking, and still think this. It's like oh, if men we're actually able to take in and, you know, be intimate, be connected, be loved in the ways that they may not even recognize they want. But once you start to open up and feel your own pain, right, that you can see and value, like, I want this. I, I really think the world would be a different place. I think there would be, this is idealistic, right? But I think there would be less power over, less war, you know, less of these um, very <laughs> challenging political dynamics and situations where, you know, there's like a dehumanizing. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that the Mankind Project is doing that. I love that you're doing that. I feel really grateful. I think it's one of the best ways I've seen for men to get support and for that, the now what, right? Like now that I'm waking up to this, what do I do? Step one. Mm -hmm. you know, get support and find a way to actually be realistic about what's happening for you as well. So then you can actually engage and be connected to women and other people who are hurting. Yeah. Without having to push, without having to push away mm -hmm. and then building skill sets for yeah, all the now what's. Now what's possible in my relationship now that mm -hmm. I have some skills to do that. Now what's possible for me as a dad now that I can call my kid in yeah, rather than calling my kid out. Yeah. Like there's a fundamental difference in the interaction. Right. Um, in there. When I'm able to routinely model and talk about de-escalating uh, intense situations rather than escalating intense situations. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like kids in the car having fits because you're not parking in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Kids, kids having fits because they lost their earbuds and, and you're not going to stop at the store. This is, you know, past week in my life, not going to stop at the store immediately to get a new right. pair of earbuds. Right. Right. So, right. so this has an impact in, 
you know, the world out there and um, the whole Me Too era, but also, right, parenting, family, work life, colleagues, bosses, all of it. Yeah. And I, I have... I have a whole, I have another little sideline conversation that I definitely want to go into and I want to check in with you on time first. Okay. We've got a couple more minutes. Does that feel like a doable or we should do a part two? <laughs> there may be a part two in this conversation, but I do want to call something out. So we've really been talking about responsibility and personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. and, and here is what I see as, hey, dude, out there. Here's, here may be one of the biggest pieces of work that you'll need to do to get started on this path yeah. is being able to create a distinction between separation, dependency, and individuation. Mm. All right. So if we're going to do a part two at some point where we really go into this, give us the highlight of it now and what a man can use. What I see right now out there is a lot of men... Um, doing separation uh -huh. defense uh -huh. in response to, you know, the relationship, my historical relationship, first relationship, mom, <sighs> reject, separate, yeah. Yeah. push away to find myself to feel powerful, to feel powerful. Things. Right. Yeah. And that usually becomes an object kind of relationship it usually becomes power relationship, dynamic hierarchy, all of those things. Dependency. I see men out there sinking into dependency, mm. uh, whipping boys. Mm -hmm. So I'll take the blame dying. I'll take the blame. Mm -hmm. I will sink into the, the hole of shame. Mm -hmm. If I can make you happy somehow. Right. Yes. yes. If I can prove that I'm not a bad guy. Yes. Yes. Also unhealthy. Also not going to get us where we need to need to go. Yeah. Individuation. How do I recognize interdependence, mm -hmm. species, gender, family history, and individuate mm -hmm. so that I am able to stand both in relationship fully connected and in my individual self? Yeah. So, you know, psychological concept, but deep, deep, deep work to do. Yes. Um, and I think, I think urgent yeah. for us to get away from the object power over relationships that a lot of men are trying to recreate as a reaction to um, what's happening out in the world and really look at how do we individuate as men? Mm -hmm. How do we embrace the healthy strength that we have? Mm -hmm. How do we create a culture that can hold, protect, contain yeah. all of us? I love that, right? And how, how does your strength not have to depend on somebody else's weakness? Yes. Right? How can you be strong and also uplift others and call in others? Feels important. Because damn, is it amazing and hot and exciting and beautiful and great gratifying mm -hmm. when I am standing fully in my own power, standing fully in like, oh, yeah, I'm all right. And what that does for the people around me, yeah. no matter what's going on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I want that for all guys and I want women. I really want women to have men in their lives like that. Yeah. I yeah. do too. I do too. And I want to, you know, it, go, it goes back around because when men have women in their lives who are like that, and I've, I've gotten to see this in my own life, that I'm an ally for men and I'm a support for men. And so the men who are in my sphere then get to be even more supported and more loved and more held and more strengthened, right? And so then we get to keep building this together and supporting each other versus there's something that gets taken away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll Thank be back. You. We will be back. Thank you for having this conversation and for, um, you know, leading a charge, right? For creating the hashtag I am responsible for not – you know, cowering in the face of a lot of intense energy out there that is blaming and attacking. And thank you for 
for being an example of a kind of strength that isn't power over or defense, but is actually embracing and connecting and, and being open with your heart. I'll keep trying every day practicing. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope it gives you a sense of what's possible and how good your life can be. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe to Man Alive and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash manalive to get outtakes, videos, and raw footage I only share there. These are some of the most interesting parts of these expert conversations. You can also grab your copy of The Unknown Power to accelerate your career and solidify your confidence with women because the two are related and I know you don't have to settle for one or the other. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.